Welcome to Sage Audio. Today, let's look at how to process vocals. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Smooth Vocal EQ. For this video, we're gonna look at two quick ways to start a vocal chain. Now, this will take up chapters one through six. Then we're gonna look at how to add on to these quick chains for specific purposes. So let's start with creating a smooth sound. First, we'll insert an EQ onto the vocal and use a 6 dB per octave high pass filter. We'll center this around the fundamental. Then let's subtly boost 250 Hz and dip a little of 3.5 kHz, both by only a dB. Lastly, we should observe the response and pinpoint our sibilance before attenuating it. With the shade EQ, I'll make the band dynamic, but a regular EQ will work well too. Let's take a listen to how the vocal becomes smoother and slightly less defined in a way that could be used purposefully. You Smooth vocal compression. Let's add compression to the EQ that we used last chapter and again focus on smoothing the vocal out. I'll use optical emulated compression, so if you have a LA-2A emulation, it'll work well. I'll use an attack of 10 milliseconds and a longer program dependent release. I'll also use a softer knee and three to four milliseconds of look ahead if the plugin offers it. All of these settings will quickly capture the transient, attenuate it, and then slowly return the signal to unity, causing a smooth sound. Let's take a listen to this compression added after our EQ. If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and it helps us bring you more videos. Full, warm tape saturation. Last up for this small vocal chain, let's make the vocal full sounding by generating harmonics. If we use tape emulation, we accomplish a few things. First, we generate low order harmonics to emphasize lower frequencies in the vocal. Second, we diminish transients due to the nature of tape. Lastly, any good tape emulation will attenuate higher frequencies. Some do this consistently, while others introduce a cut periodically. Either way, it's gonna smooth out the vocal. Let's take a listen to our first mini chain with all three processors included. Aggressive Vocal EQ So in the first three chapters, we covered how to start a vocal chain off if you want a smooth vocal, but let's do the opposite and create an aggressive, upfront sound. Let's begin again with the EQ, but this time we'll use an 18 dB per octave high pass right below the fundamental. Then we'll attenuate some of 250 Hz before amplifying 3.5 kHz with a bell. This will make the vocal stick out and cut through a mix. I'll still want to attenuate my sibilance, but I'll reduce it to a lesser extent before boosting frequencies right above it, typically 12 kHz and above. Let's take a listen. Aggressive Vocal Compression After our EQ, let's introduce aggressive compression. Now you could use almost any compressor for this so long as it isn't an optical compressor. Now I'll use a clean setting, but set my attack as fast as it can go and do the same for the release time before setting a hard knee. Now you might be thinking, why use a quick attack? Won't that capture the transient quickly? Now that's true, but if the attack is quick enough, it's gonna cut into the transient, distorting it, and in turn, actually amplifying it. Now something similar can be said about the quick release but its effect is less noticeable. I won't use look ahead this time, but I'll use auto makeup gain to amplify quieter aspects of the vocal. Let's take a listen with the EQ from the last chapter enabled. Cut through tube saturation. Instead of tape saturation like we used in chapter three, we're gonna try two. Like tape, it'll create low ordered harmonics that'll fill the low frequency spectrum. However, it'll also amplify our transients and amplify the high frequency range of the signal, resulting in a present sound. Now, if you're using Saturn 2, you can create an envelope follower, change it to transient mode and attach it to the drive dial. What's more, you could isolate the saturation to frequencies that make it cut through the mix. And again, attach this follower to that drive dial. Let's take a listen and notice how the vocal is more aggressive up front and has its transients accented. Like 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 
Today's video is brought to you by Lalal AI, a next generation neural network trained in separating and extracting various instruments and signals, all with minimal audio artifacts. To use it, simply upload your track, let the AI process it, and then preview the results. It can separate vocals from instrumentation, as well as drums, bass, electric guitar, and more. Additionally, they offer a vocal cleaning program that's great at attenuating unwanted noise from a vocal or dialogue. Right now, they're offering a free starter package, so check that out using the link in the description. Reverb for natural sound. So we've covered how to make a smooth vocal and how to make an aggressive vocal. But let's talk now about natural sounding reverb versus exaggerated reverb. Now, if I want to make my vocal have a more natural sound, I'm going to use room emulation. Now, most plugins offer a studio emulation setting, which will work well. However, increase dampening if it's available and reduce the pre-delay to more closely emulate a room's reflections. Now, I would typically pair this with the smooth vocal chain, but let's listen to it on both chains to hear how it affects the overall signal. If you're enjoying the channel, use the search box to watch more of our videos. Reverb for modern pop sound. If you're producing pop vocals or you want a more modern sound, you won't be too concerned with realism. That said, larger, brighter reverbs will work well. With them, you could use a longer pre-delay as well as amplify the high frequency range if that function is available. Additionally, modern reverb has a longer decay in the high frequencies, so you can control this as well if the plugin that you're using allows for it. Now, as you might imagine, I'd usually pair this with the aggressive vocal chain, but let's listen to both chains run through this reverb, starting with the smooth chain. Delay for modern pop sound. If you're going down the modern pop route, try this trick in combination with the modern reverb that we set up in the last chapter. Set up a send and on the aux track, insert a delay plugin. I'll use an eighth and dotted eighth note stereo delay with its output set to 100%. Then I'll insert a compressor after the delay on the same aux track and sidechain the original drive vocal. As a result, the delay will be attenuated whenever the vocal is originally sung, but then increase in amplitude after the vocal is no longer present. This is called delay ducking, and it's been pretty common for a while, but it doesn't get talked about too much. Let's take a listen to this used on our aggressive vocal chain with the modern reverb enabled and also routed as a send or parallel aux track. Parallel comp for full mids. Last up, here's a trick that I found works well for either a smooth or aggressive sound. I'll use a parallel send for my vocal and on the auxiliary track, insert a linear phase EQ before isolating the mids with a high and low pass filter. Then I'll insert either a downward or upward compressor to bring quieter details forward. I'll use the Waves MV2 for this and fill the mid frequencies of the vocal before blending the effect in using the slider. Let's take a listen to this effect used on both our smooth and aggressive vocal chains. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.